Welcome to the 17th edition of the Tepa Storm Shadowverse Meta Snapshot. As our cast of story characters begin their adventures in the world of Reveil, so do we as players. This expansion introduces the Maneuver Mechanic. However, only two cards currently support this mechanic, and one of them is considered to be Fringe Tech. So Maneuver does not have much influence in competitive play thus far. Perhaps we will see more of these cards maneuver themselves into our collections in the mini expansion. One notable addition in the Storm Over Reveal expansion is the neutral legendary follower, Ramiel. She offers every class a way to ramp up their maximum play points. As Law of Dex benefit from hitting their power spikes and win conditions earlier, she offers a means for players, especially those who are going second, to accelerate their game plan. Ramiel may be Side Games' solution to the go first versus go second problem that was pointed out in the previous meta snapshot, as the player going second has an approximately 64% chance of drawing into one of their three Ramiels by turn 4. While not meta defining or an absolute necessity, Ramiel finds herself included in quite a few decks, and she will likely remain a strong tech choice in the future. What impacted the meta the most would be the loss of the Rebirth of Glory in rotation. Several decks from the last expansion got weaker, as parts of their toolkit became unavailable with no direct replacements. Forestcraft as a whole has struggled to find a solid foothold in the Storm of Reveil meta, with the loss of the Roach package that it has always depended on, while Havencraft has successfully migrated over to the newly supported archetypes. Before we take a deeper look at the decks for their current expansion, remember to like and subscribe to our new Tepa Strategy YouTube channel for the latest content. Evolve Sword continues its reign over the top of the tier list, and Nat Knot, Cursed Queen, has found her way into the archetype. Nat Knot is a very strong addition. Not only does she give Swordcraft yet another tool to clear enemy boards for free on demand, her free evolution on Enhance also directly contributes to the deck's overall game plan. With only the loss of King's Welcome, the deck not only maintained its strengths, but it also got even stronger than before, thanks to positive or even matchups across the board, with the exception of Burial Rite Shadow. Artifact Portal lost Artifact Duplicator and gained Carnelia, Servant of Darkness, and Ilganu, Horror Astray in Storm Over Reveil. Similar to Evolve Sword, the deck is genetically similar to its iteration of the last expansion, retaining tools such as Mugnir, Purifying Light to handle enemy threats. Its numbers in the matchup table may be somewhat deceiving, as the deck is arguably the most skill-intensive in Tier 1. Its performance scales well with the skill level of both players. Havencraft lost that Ilana engine that it had relied on, but fans of Eris were quick to find a new home in Wardhaven and Controlhaven. Wardhaven has been around for a while, but it was always considered to be a meme, due to the lack of support. Now, Side Games has given the archetype several new tools for its arsenal. Enchanted Knight for draws, Vengeful Sniper to push damage, and Anvelt, Judgment's Cannon for board control, if drawn early enough. Ramiel also finds a home in this deck as a ward follower. While the deck may be draw dependent, it is also relatively easy to play and has a matchup spread that's comparable to Evil of Swords. OTK Portal is the other new archetype that made it into tier 1 in this meta snapshot. This deck wins by using Besha, Herald of Ravages, End of Turn effect, combined with Dimension Dominator's Play Point Recovery effect. This control combo deck can potentially finish its opponent off by turn 9 or even a turn earlier, if Ramiel's effect can be activated. Holy Sanctuary forms the basis of Control Haven in Storm Over Reveil. As it turns out, a giant Holy Flame Tiger that cannot be targeted by effects can be difficult for certain archetypes to handle. By combining healing, removal, and the occasional Tiger Summon, Control Haven is able to play the long game as Ra's leader effect puts a clock on the opponent's life total. Unfortunately for Control Haven, its abysmal matchups against both Evolved Sword and its ward-filled cousin keep it from being a Tier 1 deck but it does have rather favorable matchups against most of the rest of Tier 1 and Tier 2. For our deck recommendations, as Evolve Sword continues to dominate the meta, it remains as the default go-to laddering deck. While the archetype may seem prohibitively expensive, those who already have an Evolve Sword deck from the previous expansion should not have much trouble updating it to the Storm Over Reveal version. The deck plays very similarly to before, so players should already have a good feel for the deck. When facing an abundance of Evolve Sword decks on ladder, blow the dust off Barely Right Shadow, as it is the only deck in Tier 1 and 2 with a favorable matchup against Evolve Sword. For a completely new experience, the slightly more affordable Ward Haven is also a good pick for laddering. It's one of the easier Tier 1 decks to pilot and sports a decent matchup spread across the board. For those on a budget, Burn Blood, Item Shop Rune, 
and Aggro Shadow are all decks that can secure wins on ladder. The budget deck compilation article on our website showcases a deck of every class that can get a player started. In conclusion, and in some ways, the Storm Over Reveal expansion echoes Steel Rebellion, as it not only features a new world as introduced by the story arc, but also provides powerful yet under-supported tools that lay the groundwork for future archetypes. As such, this meta snapshot ended up looking somewhat similar to the one from before the expansion. Decks that lost very little, such as Evolve Sword and Artifact Portal, remain in power, while decks such as Spellboost Ruin have dropped in rankings. As we are just a week and a half into the current expansion, the meta is still in its infancy stage. While it is unlikely that a deck will topple Swordcraft's throne without a nerf, the current Dragon, Shadow, and Ruin decks may see more refinement. Wardhaven may drop off in popularity as the meta develops. Strong players tend to favor decks that reward them for good play. The West and SCAO Contenders Cups are set to happen this month. Tune in to watch some of the most talented players in the game battle it out for a spot to represent their region in the 2020 World Grand Prix. Check out a series of Contenders Cup related articles on the Shadowverse section of our website, and take part in a Guest for Winner contest on Twitter, on our Shadowverse, and on Discord. If you would like to take a trip to Japan once it is safe to travel, or to try your luck in a tournament, keep an eye on the announcement for Operation Tokyo. Check in next month for an updated Tempest Storm Shadowverse Meta Snapshot, featuring a more fully fleshed out Storm over a Veil expansion.